I'm back to overload your brain with more cat genetics facts. In part two, we will be studying the white coloring in cats. In the white colorings, we will learn about dominant white genes, albinism, and the white spotting gene. However, before you watch this video, make sure you watch part one to get more caught up with what I will be talking about. So we covered the solid colors in the last video, but I did not explain one solid color, white. So why are they different then? This is due to the fact that a white cat can be produced three different ways. These ways are called the dominant white gene, white spotting, and albinism. So what is the difference between these three types of white cats? Let's start off with telling the difference between an albino cat and an actual cat. There's a popular belief that a white cat with blue eyes is considered albino. This is actually not true. Albinos have pink or pinkish blue eyes, and their eyes are very sensitive to light. Albinism is actually a mutation caused by the absence of color, not the covering up of color like a normal white cat. So the first type of white cat we will be talking about is dominant white. A dominant white cat is the color associated with deafness in cats. It is common for cats with blue eyes to be deaf. Dominant white masks all other colors and cats have blue, orange, or odd eyes. Those with blue eyes have a very high chance of being deaf, and those with one blue eye have a high chance of being deaf on the blue-eyed side. Those with orange eyes are far less likely to be deaf. These cats are not albino. In fact, dominant white cats can be any color, but the white gene is dominant to those other colors while albinism is the absence of other colors. The white gene is carried in an autosome, which is a chromosome other than the X or Y sex chromosomes, and the trait occurs equally in males and females. So when we look at our original colors, we see that orange is the dominant color, the next is black, then chocolate, then cinnamon. The diluted colors work in the same way. If we add white to the mix, it would be dominant over orange. Now, would this change the way we can predict what colors kittens will be with genotypes, phenotypes, and our Punnett square? Actually, it doesn't change much. Since dominant white is a masking color, we would figure out the original color like we normally would. So let's go back to our first lesson, and we're going to use the Punnett square. I'm going to be using a complicated example this time. Let's say we have a black torty queen who carries a dilution gene. So she's homozygous orange and black and heterozygous diluted. And a black tom who also carries a dilution gene. So he's homozygous black and heterozygous diluted. The genotype for the queen would look like big O, little O, big B, big B, big D, little D. And the genotype for the tom would look like little o, little o, big b, big b, big d, little d. And when we put that in the Punnett square, we get four different genotypes for offspring. We have a 25% chance of a big o, little o, big b, big b, big d, big d. 25% chance of a big o, little o, big b, big b, big d, little d. 25% chance of little o, little o, big b, big b. Big D, little d, and a 25% chance of a little o, little o, big B, big B, little d, little d. And if you remember, colors are sex linked traits, and the milk kittens will always get their color from their mother. Since their mother is a torty, male kittens will have a 37.5% chance of being black, 37.5% chance of being orange. 12.5% chance of being blue, and 12.5% chance of being cream. And as for the females, they have 37.5% chance of being black, 37.5% chance of being a black torty, 12.5% chance of being blue, and a 12.5% chance of being a blue torty. I know, this is pretty confusing. However, I have a site that can help you with this to make it less complicated. It's called percep perceptibly bleached. I'll put it. I'll put it on the on the screen here. If you go to this site, it, it can help you with all the genotypes and it can tell you what colors males and females are. 
and uh, yeah, it really helps you out there. I use it to check my work because I do all mine by hand. So what would happen if the queen had a white masking gene, as in she's dominant white? There's a rule in the Cat Fanciers Association that a dominant white cat must have a dominant white parent. Therefore, the queen would look white despite having the genes for a black torty dilution carrying cat. The white gene will be represented with a W. So when we add the big W little W, meaning the white masking gene is present, into the queen's phenotype, and a little w, little w, meaning no white masking gene, into the John's genotype, we see that the white gene itself is present in 50% of the kittens, while the rest of the 50% do not have the white gene. The rest of the colors will still look the same for the kittens, but 50% of them will be white. And remember, white is not a sex like trait. It can happen to either male or female kittens. Hoo hoo hoo. So that was a little bit of a complicated one. But we'll have to move on, and this time we'll move on to the white spotting gene. White spotting is a gene that is present in a solid cat, a tabby cat, and a torty cat. It is a semi-dominant gene. Semi-dominant means it produces a heterozygous phenotype. This means that a semi-dominant gene would only be either heterozygous, so that means displaying the dominant gene, or homozygous recessive meaning it shows the recessive gene. White spotting is represented by the letter S. Not only is it semi-dominant, but it is also variable in the way it is expressed. Being a variable means that the cat may have no visible white spots or may be completely white in all stages in between the two extremities. But unlike the dominant white gene, white spotting is not linked to deafness. There are three different categories in white spotting low grade, medium grade, and high grade. And within these categories are 10 different grades of white spotting. In the low grade category, we have grades one to four. Grade one means that the white spotting gene is present, but is not expressed. The cat will either look fully colored, fully tabby, or fully torty. Grade two, three, and four show white spotting that can make a cat look up to 40% white. It could be small white spots that are on the chest or on the belly or toes, white paws, and the tuxedo pattern. Now we come up to the medium grade category, but there is only one grade in this category. This is grade 5, where the cat is 40-60% to 60 covered in white. So a cat can look half and half or have large patches over their back. Then we get into the high grade category. Grades 6 to 9 show white spotting that can make a cat look 60% to 99% white. So as the grade gets higher, the less patches of color are on the cat. And then there is grade 10, where the cat is fully white. The white spotting gene does not determine how much white spotting a kitten will have, depending on its parents. A tuxedo queen could have two low grade kittens and two high grade kittens. But in order to have a white spotting kitten, or it can also be called bicolored, the white spotting gene has to be present in one of the parents. But a grade 10 white spotting cat can be confused for a dominant white cat. However, there are two differences that can tell a white cat is a grade 10 white spotting cat. Their hearing and their eye colors. A grade 10 cat is rarely deaf while the dominant white cat is usually deaf. A white dominant cat will almost always have blue, orange, or odd eyes of these colors, while a grade 10 white spotting cat can have blue, orange, green, yellow, copper, or odd eyes of those combinations. This can also explain why two non-white cats suddenly can have a white kitten. I should also add one thing here. There was some confusion when I explained how torties were born, and there are some confusion between torties and calicos. Many people think torties and calicos are different kinds of colors, and some even think they're different breeds because they're named differently. In fact, calicos are torties. They are called calicos because their markings look more like patches and torties look more brindled. So why does that happen? This is how white spotting affects tortoise shell color distribution. As the amount of white spotting increases, the tortoise shell color becomes less brindled and forms patches. Calicos and torties are the same, 
Cow and Coast are just more identified as a patched cat, while a Torty is more identified as a brindled mix and match. Now, the last source of white in cats is albinism. There are some forms of albinism that are more common than you think. There are five known alleles for albinism. Blue-eyed albino, pink-eyed albino, Burmese, Siamese, and full-colored, or non-albino. And just like the main cat colors being dominant and recessive, the five alleles of albinism also have a list of what is more dominant than others. Obviously, the full color is the dominant gene, shown as a C. Burmese and Siamese patterns are incomplete genes. Incomplete dominant genes is a term which one allele does not completely dominate over the other allele, creating a new phenotype. This would be like a red flower and a white flower creating pink flowers. And yes, flowers have phenotypes too. Burmese and Siamese albinism is unique due to their colors being temperature dependent. This means that the warm areas of their bodies would be paler while the cool areas of their bodies are colored. The face, ears, legs, and tail are all cooler parts of the body. For this reason, these two alleles are described as color restriction rather than albinism. Pink-eyed albino is the most recessive gene of all the albino mutations, making blue-eyed more dominant than pink-eyed, and albinism is not linked to deafness in cats. I think I'm going to have to end this here. I was hoping to also get into the tabby patterns, like I said in my previous video. I think I went into it a little bit too much detail, so we'll have to save the tabbies for next time. And until then... Have fun figuring all this out. I hope I didn't hurt your brain. Bye.